Oh, here, the Helldiver's lore. Not too distant future. In the not too distant future, Super Earth stands on the brink of annihilation. Its skies darkened by swarms of foul alien bugs. Its ground besieged by the relentless march of socialist mechanical monstrosities. But in its time of need, humanity calls upon its mightiest and most disposable heroes, the Helldivers. An elite peacekeeping force who dive feet first into the deadliest of war zones, battling against overwhelming enemy forces to spread the shining light of managed democracy across the stars. Welcome aboard everyone to this Law Tours flight, where today we'll be heading to the bastion of managed democracy, known as Super Earth. What is life like there? What strange and cruel forces besiege humanity? And who are the illustrious Helldivers? All great questions that we, my friends, will be answering today. So get comfortable, grab a nice hot cup of liberty, and settle in. Let's embark on this lore tour of the Helldiver Corps and Super Earth. In the late 21st century, humanity is united under one banner, the Federation of Super Earth. This grand planetary government emerged as a beacon of freedom, peace, and liberty, heralding a new era for humankind. With a mission to extend the reach of good old-fashioned human civilization, the Federation dispatches its brave citizens to colonize new worlds, confront foul alien life forms, and spread managed democracy throughout the galaxy by force. But what you may ask exactly is this glorious concept of managed democracy? It is the pinnacle of political systems, a marked improvement upon the ancient, flawed democracy of yesteryears. In this system, citizens are shepherded through the voting process by a benevolent automated voting system, which presents voters with a series of questions before casting the vote on their behalf. Gone are the days of confusion and uncertainty, where the Finally. common folk stumbled in the dark, unaware of what they were really voting for. Now they support the correct policies and candidates, those that champion the undying principles of freedom and liberty. Amidst the utopian sprawling metropolises and verdant landscapes of humanity's vast intergalactic empire. I can't help but notice that uh, the managed democracy and the, and the incredible landscapes look creepily similar to just like upgraded suburbs full of cars everywhere. Super Earth enjoy a life of prosperity and patriotic fervor thanks to this managed democracy. However, in this paradise, a few misguided souls, the dissenters, the liberty haters, dare to whisper against the glorious federation of Super Earth. To safeguard this utopian society, these acts of sedition, be it as vile as tarnishing the planet's noble name, questioning the infallible government, or failing to honor the sacred Super Earth flag, have been justly criminalized. Even Thank the God. contemplation of such treachery is met with the most righteous of consequences, arrest or execution, and it is the sacred duty of every citizen to remain vigilant, to turn in those, even their own kin, who harbor unpatriotic sentiment. So it's fair that the privilege of procreating, the esteemed C1 perm child permits, are bestowed only upon those deemed worthy, only the most loyal, those who bleed the colors of Super Earth, are entrusted with the honor of nurturing service guarantees citizenship in the future. And I guess in this circumstance, service guarantees a right to produce, reproduce humanity ensuring that the next generation will inherit the unbreakable will and fervent patriotism that define the citizens of Super Earth. These good citizens are not alone in the galaxy though. When mankind ventured into space, they were curious to see if any other life forms dwelled out amongst the stars. Unfortunately, they were right. And while the initial contacts with these alien scum were peaceful, the people of Super Earth soon realized the danger of these alien species, beginning the first intergalactic war. But who are these foul enemies of liberty? Well, there are three that we know of. The cyborg nation of Cyberstan are a testament to the chilling consequences of unchecked technological augmentation and the stark antithesis of Super Earth's shining vision of managed democracy. 
The ways of these cybernetically or Okay, I can't tell if this guy who's like deep diving into the lore gets it or doesn't fully get it. Like, he must get it, right? He understands, I think. Augmented humans and automatons were tolerated at first, until the tranquility of humanity's city worlds was shattered when cyborg terrorists, driven by a perverse communist ideology and ridiculous belief that the citizens of Super Earth are all brainwashed by propaganda, unleashed <laughs> devastation in the <laughs> heart of District 48, claiming the lives of thousands of innocent citizens. This heinous act announced to the world that these former humans had broken. I think he's just playing into it. Yeah, no, I, I love it. Yeah. Did you, did you inspect the spotlights on the robot planets? They're called, they're called authoritarian light. Broken away from the peaceful ways of Super Earth and served as a call to humanity's defenders, prompting them to launch a brutal campaign to bring the light of democracy to the dark corners of Cyberstan. Cyberstan itself, a desolate snow-covered wasteland, has become the stage for a struggle between the forces of freedom and the remnants of a society clinging to its socialist doctrines. Super Earth's response to the cyborg threat has been both swift and decisive. Following each act of aggression by cyborg terrorists, Super Earth forces embark on a mission of liberation, democratizing the cyborgs with a firm hand, guiding them towards the democratic way of life under the vigilant watch of the Super Earth Army Tactical Command. For five uh. years after a successful campaign against these cyborgs, peace is enforced by an occupying army and the seeds of democracy are sown, allowing the Super Earth Construction Company to repurpose the vast forges and factories of the cyborg nation for the greater good. The Terminids are a sentient extraterrestrial species of oversized bugs, whose very existence has been a plague on the galaxy for far too long, necessitating their eradication before their infestation spreads to other worlds. Kepler Prime, a barren desert planet on the eastern fringes of the galaxy, serves as the homeworld for this formidable foe. Here, amidst the desolate landscape, the bugs have thrived and evolved for millions of years, becoming the most elite natural killing machines. They're not all that bad though, as their bodies do yield vast quantities of oil, a resource incredibly oh. valuable to super earth in it. Did somebody say oil? It's extragalactic exploits. As such, once a terminid outbreak has been quelled, these rare and valuable bugs should be housed on carefully controlled farms where they can be protected and exploited for a bountiful quantity of natural resources. Sorry, exploited? Excuse me. You kind of sounded like you got that mind virus from the artificial socialist robots from Cyberstan, brother. What do you mean exploited? First encountered in the- It's called liberated. They're liberating their body from the oils that they have. Late 21st century through frequent encounters with recon spacecraft, the enlightened and technologically superior Illuminate stepped into the galactic theater with an offer of peace for Super Earth. However, the discovery that they allegedly possessed weapons of mass destruction capable of annihilating entire worlds swiftly shifted Super Earth's stance from potential diplomacy to decisive action. Originating from the oceans of their homeworld, these blue-skinned aquatic beings have harnessed the powers of bioelectronics and nano-powered devices, making them a fierce foe for the proud defenders of liberty, leading to tense standoffs and the ever-present danger of planet-destroying devices. Upon securing victory against the Illuminate in war, Super Earth tends to impose a treaty stripping the aliens of their military capabilities and commandeering their advanced weaponry, reducing the threat of future- Oh shit. In the not too distant future, Super Earth stand- Fuck. Humanity's action rifle, done to encourage military- of their homeworld, these blue-skinned aquatic beings have harnessed the powers of bioelectronics and nano-powered devices, making them a fierce foe for the proud defenders of liberty, leading to tense standoffs and the ever-present danger of planet-destroying devices. Upon securing victory against the Illuminate in war, Super Earth tends to impose a treaty stripping the aliens of their military capabilities 
and commandeering their advanced weaponry, reducing the threat of future war and significantly enhancing humanity's own technological capabilities. The force defending Super Earth against these alien threats is the illustrious Super Earth military. To serve within its ranks is the highest honour bestowed upon the sons and daughters of the Federation, and on their 16th birthday every citizen of Super Earth is issued a ceremonial bolt action rifle done to uh. encourage military service and train them in the use of firearms. While the valiant forces of the Super Earth military hold the line against the tide of villainous entities that besiege Super Earth, there exists a cadre of warriors unparalleled in their bravery and dedication, the Helldivers. These mightiest and most obedient of heroes venture deep behind enemy lines to sow the seeds of democracy, prosperity, and justice across the galaxy ensuring that the light of Super Earth illuminates even the darkest corners of the universe. Men and women drafted from the regular army corps, Helldiver recruits are sent to the Helldiver facility on Mars to receive further training and engage in live fire exercises against Terminates. In its early days, this training consisted of what is best described as Ranger training, training the troops to scout and perform assassination missions behind enemy lines. Over time, the scope of this training has expanded, preparing them for a myriad of specialist roles, from piloting mechanized assault walkers and acting as riot-controlling police, to mastering the use of chemical weapons and coordinating devastating airstrikes. Upon completion of their training, a Helldiver will be cryogenically frozen until they are required and shipped off to some far-flung war zone, mm. where they will be stationed aboard a custom Helldiver Super Destroyer, mighty starships capable of raining down fire from orbit and housing a number of Eagle fighters, multi-role aerospace craft used to gain air superiority on a world and perform precision ground assault operations for Helldiver Command. When required planetside, the Helldivers load up into ship-mounted Hellpods, shock-absorbing pods that break the atmosphere at extreme velocities and crash into the planet's surface, ready to deploy their Helldiver. This method of deployment dates back to when the forces of Super Earth were faced by a heavily entrenched force of secessionist foes on the planet of Northman's Creek. Unable to gain the air superiority required to land troops on the world, Super Earth created the Hellpods and dropped 50 Helldivers onto the planet's parliament, ready to execute the enemies of democracy housed there. Uh -huh. For decades, these sons and daughters of liberty have been engaged in a brutal galactic campaign against the forces of tyranny, protecting its colonies, keeping the peace, and beating the enemies of Super Earth to a pulp. At the forefront of this righteous battle, the Helldivers stand as the elite spearhead of the Federation's military might. Executing critical missions with precision and unwavering courage, they secure vital resources, neutralize enemy leaders, and demolish facilities of war. Wherever humanity goes, the Helldivers are there, spreading managed democracy throughout the galaxy. There are whispers, however, that behind the propaganda, behind the censors and uh -oh. vice-like grip of the Super Earth Ministry of Truth, there might be more to this galactic war and the Federation of Super Earth than meets the eye. Rumors swirl that the narrative peddled by Super Earth, painting the cyborgs as socialist terrorists in need of liberation, may be a fabrication. It may actually be Super Earth itself that orchestrated the terrorist attacks on its own cities, fabricating a reason to justify the invasion of cyborg territories, enslavement of its people, and capture of their industrial might. The narrative framing the bugs as an existential menace, a swarm poised to devour civilization, hides a more sinister motive. The government's crusade against the bugs thinly veils a grotesque venture, the establishment of farms designed to exploit the bug's death Wait. for oil. A grim- No, they're liberating them from the oil in their bodies. That's a good thing. Like the top of the hour ad break is a good thing. And you can liberate yourself from the top of the hour ad break by subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Duh. That's how this shit works. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Harvest fueling Super Earth's insatiable energy appetite. 
As for the Illuminate, branded as a supremely intelligent race, with a penchant for apocalyptic weaponry, the truth lays buried under layers of deceit. Super Earth's aggression against these aliens might not have been a preemptive strike for survival, but a voracious grab for the Illuminate's superior technologies. Of course, those daring to question the official account, or even show sympathies towards any of these threats, meet a swift and final silence, eradicated to quell any seeds of dissent. And this feeds into another, darker manipulation committed by the Federation, targeting the young and brilliant citizens of Super Earth, recruiting them for service on the front lines. This calculated culling of the youth serves not only to rid the system of potential dissenters against the Federation, but also to indoctrinate those who survive service in the Federation military, with a narrative of honour and sacrifice. Those who return are ensnared in a web of justified atrocities, unwitting champions of the very system that exploits them. And if all of this got out, it might just leave a Super Earth citizen wondering, are we the bad guys? Hmm. But surely that's all just traitorous hippie talk, best just to ignore those whispers. Well I hope you enjoyed your flight today with Law Tours. That was Let sick. us know down in the comments whether you would enlist with the Helldiver Corps, or chuck your hat in with those dreaded cyborg socialists. And if you enjoyed this trip make sure to subscribe so that you're ready to travel with us again soon. Thanks for watching, catch you next time. It's great video because um, it's it's great lore in general, and it's a good video. I love that he like incorporated Helldivers one as well, which I didn't even know existed. By the way, like I had no fucking clue what that was about. Well, on that note, chat, I'm really fucking tired.